Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is uh, Carl Adam Holmberg, and I'm head of Snelltåget, which is a very much smaller player than my friends on, on this part of the room. Um, we will actually run night trains from Copenhagen or from Denmark already in February next year. Um, so I think that's worth mentioning in this scenario as well. Uh, first of all, I'm welcoming the great interest uh, in, in this kind of uh, climate uh, change discussion which is taking place right now. Uh, we can see both from the public and also from the politicians that there's a great, great focus on this topic. And I think that's really key somehow to be successful with the uh, climate uh, challenges we face. Uh, I can also uh, reflect that I really share some of the challenges mentioned uh, by my colleagues on the, on the, on the stage. Uh, I'm, but still, I don't think we have the same way uh, forward in, in, in some, some subjects, to be honest. Um, the pandemic affects the development, of course, but one thing is for sure, there will be a day after tomorrow, uh, and we need to use this pause to prepare for the future. Uh, and my future is uh, looking, f uh, 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 looking forward and not looking backward. <laughs> Just a comment on the presentation from my friends from Vienna. Uh, I, would, I would say that this is, some, this is something about sustainability, is that we need to be sustain, uh, sustainability in sustainable travel uh, is a question whether we want to look for painkillers or for remedy. Uh, sustainability is an important and central, both with regard to the climate change and with regard to finding long-term solutions. Uh, now it's the time to agree if we would like to have a real shift into rail or not. Uh, are we willing to set, set aside short-term solutions, which I then call painkillers, uh, and find a remedy and my remedy is about removing the obstacles blocking development, not at least when it comes to the cross-border trains, which I also heard from, from my colleagues here. Are we willing to stimulate competition, uh, not blocking it? Uh, competition in, for instance, Sweden, and also from the Czech Republic, we, we can see a higher demand, more passengers and lower prices also from this night train segment, to be honest. And Snelltoget is one of the, of the players who uh, have, have made this change in, into this night train segment. Are we willing to agree on fair conditions such as supporting open access alternatives? If public procurement is needed, competitive tender should be used. It can't be a question. Are we willing to stimulate the railway through, for instance, lowered infrastructure fees instead of, of um, uh, contracting a company? Uh, are we willing to let the customers and also the potential customers define what they want and not let the politician do so? For me, it's a key question. Somehow, it's time to prepare for tomorrow. As I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, this is really key somehow, uh, and, and, and for me it's clear that we need to find this kind of long-term solutions. We can't continue with quick fixes or painkillers, we need to remedy the obstacles instead. The Euro European railway market has been open for competition for a while, in theory. In reality, it is something else, and that's also something that we need to bear in mind. We can spend years in analyzing the night train situation in Europe and why we can't see more night trains running across Europe today. The quick answer is that we somehow are stuck in old truths, saying that it's not possible to operate night trains without subsidies, which is completely not uh, longer true. We can see commercially uh, uh, businesses in several countries where night trains are operated without subsidies also from the Swedish State Railway, for instance, as mentioned before. And Snelltoget is another example. Anyhow, we need to leave history behind us and look forward. That's my message, at least. Uh, politicians across Europe agree that we need to treat the European railway market as a single market. I fully agree with this. We need to make the vision of a single market into reality. Uh, that's the next step. 
Okay, I didn't mention that much uh, uh, what Snell target is, and I think it's worth mentioning as well, <laughs> because maybe you, we are not that known as, as my friends up here. Uh, I mean, we are, we are quite a small player, uh, and we have been operating uh, uh, trains uh, without subventions uh, since 2007. We actually have been operating night trains as well without subventions since 2007. Uh, we are a small player, but we are a part of the big French-German global mobility company, Transdev. Uh, so, so we have a big, big mum, so to, so to speak. Uh, we are, today, we are the company operating night train from Scandinavia to the rest of Europe. And we are, that's us. We are running, but right now we are not running because of the pandemic. Uh, and we started our, our um, uh, journey with this kind of, kind of uh, night trains going abroad in 2012. Uh, and what I mentioned before, we have been operating domestic night trains since 2007. Uh, we, are, we are doing some, some big projects as well, maybe not for 500 million euro, but we spend some money too. We have actually recently bought some second-hand coaches which we are refurbishing for the night train services. So what we are planning to do and what we had planned to do this year was to increase our service with 150% uh, compared to the last year. That will now happen next year instead because of the pandemic. What we will do next year is that we will connect Stockholm, Malmö, Copenhagen with Hamburg and Berlin. Uh, and we will also operate some seasonal train to the, to the uh, country of my friends on, on the uh, uh, right here. So it's uh, to, the, to the ski resorts uh, in Selamse and so on. We are not just talking, we are, we are doing it right now, to be honest, just to summarize. And just like my friends here, for me it's a key that we have satisfied customers and we actually see the same pattern. We have the most uh, happy customers, those customers traveling with the night trains. And that's really a success factor. Uh, now, I might not have the same topics when I, uh, when I define the challenges, but de definitely there are challenges with night trains, and especially the international one. Uh, and according to the incumbents, night train needs subventions to operate. I think that's the message, at least, uh, from, from some of the panel. And I think somehow it's... it's it's quite fascinating hearing this message all the time because somehow it's a failure of the incumbents because they have been having the, the monopolies in the past. Uh, companies like us, Snell Teoget, uh, and also the, the Czech-based Regio yet uh, show that it's possible to operate night train without subventions. Also uh, going with the, the international segment. Somehow, I think it's more that you need to understand the customers in a more deeper way. Uh, you, and you need to understand the variation in demand. Demand varies during the week, and there is also a seasonal uh, variation. Who wants to go to a ski resort during fall? Who want to go to Brussels on a Friday night? I don't know. So somehow this is the key question that you need to understand the customer. What are they willing to spend and what comfort do they want? And maybe when you ask the question, okay, do you want to have this luxury single bed compartment? Yes. Are you willing to pay 500 euro? No. Okay, but then that's, that's quite clear that people are not willing to pay that cost in the end. Uh, I would argue that... Somehow, one, one, one really good thing, which could be somehow subsidized, uh, but for me it's not subsidized, it's, it's, it's making better conditions for the night train. That's looking at the, the, the track, track fee for using the tracks, because right now for, for, for this kind of services, it's, it's most often more than 25% of the total cost comes from the track access fees. Uh, and I think that's really something to look deeper into. Uh, and I've already mentioned what we are planning to do as soon as possible, and, 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 and possible is not because of us, it's because of what's going on with the pandemic. But we have already done some really important step. 
before the pandemic. Uh, we, we launched uh, online booking, which is also a challenge when it comes to the train segment, uh, that it's quite difficult to find these kind of solutions. Uh, we actually launched it last year that it's, it's possible to book online uh, uh, train, uh, uh, night train trips from Sweden to 30 German cities, and more will come. Uh, we, we do not spend 500 million euro, but we spend a lot, some euro <laughs> uh, making a bigger capacity in, in Snelltoget. So we will actually launch uh, 600 new, new seats or beds uh, from this year, but that's, that will most likely happen next year, as I mentioned before. Uh, we have been working with a concept development, uh, just like uh, both, my, uh, both uh, the incumbents have mentioned already, is that I think a lot of... Uh, um, a lot of uh, the night train um, success factor is that you want to have the privacy. And privacy is possible also with couchette coaches. It's just a matter of how you make the concept for the customers. So we have been, been really dealing with this kind of concept development ourselves. We will also ch uh, change our, our routing, so we will operate via Denmark instead from, from next year. And that's, uh, that's a consequence and also a market opportunity, because th the consequence comes from the, the ferry that we have been using between Sweden and Germany has shut down. So now uh, we need to speed up, and that's what we are doing right now, and, and we will have a, have a service via Denmark instead. Uh, so, let me summarize my presentation and share some key activities, how to best develop the night train market at lowest cost and best impact on the climate. Number one, most important, act with a long-term perspective with the customers in focus. Do not create new monopolies and block the market, the competition. We, we won't get more trains, finally. We need more trains and, and a lower cost level for, 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 for those running on the, on the networks. And whether we will be successful or not, I think that's something that we need to ask the climate change, because we really need to find good conditions for, for, for meeting these kind of climate targets. We need to move the single European railway area concept into reality. We, we need long-term solutions, long-term conditions. Uh, I think we share some of them, those challenges with the signaling system, the language barriers. We need to change locomotive driver. We need to change locomotives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We have the working rules. Uh, I mean, there are lots of lots of obstacles which we somehow need to solve to be able to compete with other means of transportation. We need also, I think, look at the the. Capacity. Uh, I mean, how how do we uh, uh, how do we uh, hand out c capacity to 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 different railway uh, uh, companies and, and 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 trains and so on, and especially those going cross border. We need to have some kind of concept telling. Okay, this is a train which needs to be prioritized because else no one will will go with a night train. Uh, finally. And I also think, which I mentioned before, we need to find how could we lower the operational cost, because somehow I think that's the political point of view in this, this topic. Is it possible to, to, uh, to lower the, the cost for using the tracks? We will definitely have a lower cost, and, and we will definitely get a, a quite uh, good, good shift by itself, to be honest. Uh, so, finally, uh, what will the future look like? More painkillers, or are we willing to remedy the obstacles? Thank you for listening. <laughs>